Welcome to Podcasting Unlocked, a mini series with me, host Paul Banks. I've been podcasting for five years and I've met so many business owners who want to get involved with podcasting and just don't know where to start. They don't know where to host it, how to host it, what setup they need, what equipment they need, how to manage their guests, and have no idea about process. If that sounds like you, this show's for you. Come join us each week for the next few weeks as we discuss podcasting unlocked. Every time I hear that intro, I remember how much bloody hard work is involved in podcasting. Um, but you know what? The bit that I probably don't call out enough is how much fun it can be and how good it is for you, your business, your network and your guests. It's it's hands on heart. It is worth doing. My just my caveat has to be that you need to be very careful in how you do it. So you don't overload yourself. You don't burn out with it. You don't have to stop and it can become something that you can regularly do. Otherwise, it's a problem. It's a real problem. Um, hello. Thanks for joining us again. I hope you've been enjoying the series. We took a break last week for half term. Oh, I'm glad to be back at work for a rest. <laughs> um, for those of you with kids, you know what I'm saying. You know exactly what I'm saying. I feel like I need a holiday after the holiday. Um, I did manage to get some downtime. Uh, we've been we've been super busy with recording new episodes for the show. So to walk you through where I am with with Market Pulse, which is my podcast, um, we are currently recording episodes for March and April release. Right, we, we're a weekly podcast. And we're all the way through to March and April now. Um, we're taking a bit of a break over Christmas, where I'm going to do some kind of best of and highlight reels. I think is where I'm going to go with it. Um, and we're now starting to be a bit more selective about who the guests on the show are going to be. Um, so a really nice place to be, getting a lot of people starting to come to me now and asking if they can be part of the show, which is great. Um, and yeah, it, it feels manageable. It, like it really does feel manageable. Granted, I have brought my wife in to support with some things. So, um, But it just goes to show like she's not a technical person. She's not a... Uh, yeah, you know, an engineering wizard by any means, but she's managing to to do the editing because the process has been nailed down. The process is simple. We don't try and overcomplicate it, and and that's part of this process today. Is you know, is it's about helping you see where you can streamline things, things that you should be doing, things that you shouldn't. And so the theme of today's show is what tools do I need? Um, and I think that's really important. Um, the tools, there are so many, so many tools out there, right? There are so many third party tools out there. Some of them work together, some of them don't. Some of them are great, some of them aren't. Some of them are expensive. Some of them are affordable and surprisingly good. And so I've probably worked with a vast majority of them. Um, I'm always trialing things, testing them out, see what, what works and what doesn't for my clients and for my own processes. And I'm a big fan of not just quality, but quantity with that. So I'm always looking for things that can help us create lots of value for our clients and their audience um, as well. So I'm going to share some of those with you today. I'm going to walk you through a little bit of those platforms. Today isn't a how-to, right? It's not how do you use these platforms. It's helping you understand what tools you might need in order to get going with podcasting, how useful they are, and what they can mean for you. Um, I'm going to drink with this hand. It's my sponsored mug. And Social B is one of the platforms I'm going to quickly show you today. Um, the reason I have a mug from them is because I believe so massively in them as a business. And I think that's important to, to put over to all of you watching this. When you're choosing who your software platforms are going to be, you'll experiment with them and you might find that their customer service doesn't live up to scratch, right? Like there's a certain level of support that is needed, especially for non-technical podcasters. And I'm a big fan of finding those businesses and really championing them and supporting them. And Social B for me have been absolute rock stars. They're a smallish team growing rapidly. They've been acquired. Um, 
and I can't talk highly enough of them as for all the tools that I'm about to show you today. So let's dive in. Let me show you um, some of the tools that I am using. Oh, do I want to be square today? Yeah, I'll be square. It's all right. Right. So this is Buzzsprout. So I've talked a lot about the audio side of podcasting and how you need to be able to get yourself into the directories that are out there, right? So you have podcast directories. Um, you need to share your audio files to a host, kind of like what you would with your website, right? Like you put it into one place and that directory is then responsible for sending out a signal to all the other directories. It's called an RSS feed that tells them there's a new episode, where it can be downloaded from, what artwork comes with it, all the metadata that comes with your podcast. So they can then go and retrieve it, store it on their own servers so that people around the world can find it, right? Um, so it's a bit like a stream going out into the internet. And this is my um, podcast, Market Pulse. Um, I'm not going to hide behind it. Like we don't get huge numbers of downloads. It's growing rapidly now, right? So interestingly, we're around 50 episodes. I think we've just done episode 45 um, and I do a trailer for each and every single one of those. So the episodes are now starting to get much more downloads than they used to be, but still very much painful, slow growth, right? Don't fool yourself. It is not easy to launch a, a, a big, highly downloaded podcast. So what Buzzsprout does is it makes this whole process of sharing it with all these directories very simple. Um, for example, I would go in here and I would upload a new episode. I choose my file and it's got these tools on here. So for anybody who's not using a tool for their editing like Descript, it's got this magic mastering. Now it's extra, you've got to pay a little bit extra. The standard price for Buzzsprout for a month, you get three hours worth of audio uploads which is more than enough for most people. Um, it's $12 a month. It's not breaking the bank, it really isn't breaking the bank. It's a fantastic um, price point. And with that, you get what's called dynamic content. I'll come to that in a minute. But Magic Mastering, basically you put it through, we'd record it like this. And whereas this will sound a little bit echoey, you might hear the hum of my computer behind the scenes. You might get a bit of noise behind me if the family's walking about the house. Magic Mastering takes all that away, makes it sound as though you're in an actual recording studio. Phenomenal. Um, studio Sound in Descript does exactly the same thing. So if you've got Descript or you're planning to use that for your editing, you don't need Magic Mastering in here. It won't enhance anything further beyond that, right? And you've also got Co-Host AI. So what Co-Host will do is it will help you generate episode titles, show notes, chapter markers. So a lot of the things that I would do with ChatGPT because I'm comfortable with it, this platform will do it in here. Again, if you've got Descript, you can generate a lot of these as well. What I like about this feature with Buzzsprout though is that as you upload it, it creates all of these automatically. I don't have to go around and create each of these. They're automatically created and they're ready to go, which I think is quite a nice touch. It removes a bit of the work from your side of things. Um, but yeah, Magic Mastering, if, 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 I'll send you the link in the bottom of the, um, in the comments a bit later, but if you come to Buzzsprout, you can hear the difference between two. And you can see here it goes um, medium sound, low sound, high sound, uh, this is volume, right? And then afterwards it, it balances all that out. So you and your guest will be talking at the same volume, gets rid of all of the, the bits and pieces in the background, hiss and hum and things. Um, and it can also optimize it if you are playing music um, so if you're doing like intro and outro music live, you can do that in there. Dynamic content then is your intros and outros and your sponsorship statements. So if you've got a sponsor for your podcast, congratulations, well done. Um, you can put their, their mid roll, it's called, their sponsor advert in here. You can tell it roughly how far into the episode you want it to be. You can select where that goes per episode. So it's not just AI inserted. And it'll automatically add your intro and outro on the end of any tracks that you send to the platform. It's really, really good, really, really valuable. And you can even, I, I don't get any messages. I don't know anybody that does, to be honest, but you can get fan mail through your podcast. 
So if you've got a really engaged, interactive audience, you can get them to, um, to message you through the show in there. Dashboard here, you get stats and figures. So you can see here, you've got um, your episode pacing. I like this. This is a new feature that they brought in. The showcases how fast your podcast is growing, whether the new episodes are doing well compared to previous ones. There's basically, there's enough stats in here that no matter how intrigued you are by stats, and you can see here, right, this is, this is how it's grown. Right, it's insane. We had this massive spurt of, of um, downloads all of a sudden last week. I have no idea where it came from. Over the moon to have had it. Um, and it links to all of your, you know, predict how many downloads your next episode will get, all these sorts of things. Um, again, remember that audio is just one part of the podcast strategy, right? Um, it's great. It's valuable. Quite a lot of people listen via audio. However, a lot of people also like to watch it. So don't forget the video side of things. And we'll come to that in a moment. But yes, this platform is really as simple as I give it a file, give it a title, give it a description, some tags maybe, give it my artwork, and it will upload it to all of these directories automatically for me. So it, it even helps you register your podcast on them. It's literally, for most of these, it's just a one click. Click on it, yes, I want to be listed on there. Some of them take a bit more work, like this one. I still haven't got around to doing this one because it's a pain in the backside. I don't know why people make these things so hard to do. I will get it done. Um, and it also gives you a mini website. So you get a you get a website URL. This is this is ours here. This one here because I customised mine to go with the Javelin Content um, website. So it's markerpulse.javelincontent.com, which is really nice. That takes a bit of technical setup. If you're not a website savvy tech nerd, you don't want to do that one. You're probably better off with this one here in the middle, this personalized Buzzsprout URL. But it's something that you can share with people and it has all of your social media links on, right? I need to update this with our new Instagram and Facebook pages on here as well. Um, but it, when people come to it, they'll see this. Um, and they're, they're always bringing new things in. So you can add podcasts that you want to advertise. You can add contributors page um, where you've got and you can see here you've got you've got me on here you've got podcasts that i love and, and endorse um this one's actually one of my clients these are some good friends this is another kind of hobby podcast that i run for my son and you can link to the the, the direct pot so it's really good for helping you share the word get people to it listening to it very easily um so that's that's buzzsprout effectively it's it's a way for you to broadcast the audio version of your um, podcast nice and simply it does a lot of the work for you it's not a real learning curve it's very very simple it's designed for non-technical podcasters i highly advise that um, the next tool i'm going to show you is social b um, so social b is as i mentioned before it's a, a social media distribution tool right so once you've got your podcast recorded and it's uploaded and it's out there in the wild, you probably want to then do something with the clips, right? You, you probably want to share your highlight reels. You want to share your individual clips from your guests um, and organizing those manually through LinkedIn or through any individual social media platform is a right pain in the arse. It's horrible to do. Um, social B helps make that really, really simple. So, um, you can see here we've got all of our profiles for the business connected and i use this both for my javelin content profiles and market pulse profiles together because quite often i share the content from one to the other to kind of mix the audience up a little bit and you can see we've got a lot of posts organized right and there should be because we're we're broadcasting all the way up to march april next year and those posts are already queued up ready to go out I'm not suggesting that you go this far and, and add 220 posts, right? Because it gets become a little bit unmanageable as I'm finding now. I'm, I'm going to try and wind mine back a bit, I think. I need to come up with a strategy for how to do that. Um, but again, Social B is not an expensive tool. Um, there is a free trial that you can get for 30 days, and then there is a starter edition that's good enough for most people. And um, what I like about Social B is that you can have different content types. So you get to see behind the scenes here, guys. This is behind the scenes at Javelin Towers. Um, 
So I don't believe that you should just have one stream of content going out because that becomes quite hard to manage. And without going into the finer details of content strategy, I think your audience will get bored quickly. What Social B will let you do is connect all of your social media accounts, create types of content, like that's what these categories are for, types of content. It'll let you create schedules per social media platform per category so that you can see I want, let, for example, my client videos go out on a Friday, for example. I want that to go out on a Friday morning because that's a good, it's not a particularly powerful day for me. I don't want to think of content to post out. That's going to go out on a Friday morning. If I've got an important announcement to make, that might go out every day because if I've got something important to happen, I want my audience to know about it straight away. And we've got upcoming guests for the show as well as published guests. So the idea being the week before the podcast goes live, they get advertised in here. Um, that runs out on the day that the podcast goes live. And then they go, go up to the published one where it shows the link that the, the, the audience can go to on YouTube where that video is, is listed, or at least the playlist where it's found. And a pro tip, use the playlist link, not the actual video, <laughs> because it starts to become unmanageable. It depends on how many posts you're gonna do. Keep it simple to start with, go to the playlist, then it's at least directing people to the right place in case that link's not working or you copy the wrong link in or whatever. So this is a really powerful tool for creating a wide variety of content, not just for your podcast, but for your business as well. You can import files in bulk, which is really important for podcasting. So you might have five or six clips that you wanna share. You can put them all in. You can write the posts that go with them all at the same time. And you can even include an approval process in there so it can be authorized by someone else who wants to quality check it. Um, you can set up schedules. You can see a very, very busy schedule, right? Very busy schedule. It's confusing because there's lots of different profiles. Um, if I, want, I, 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 dare, I dare show you the whole thing. You blow people's minds up. Um, it certainly blows mine up. And you can get analytics out the back of it, right? Um, so you can you can get to see how how your posts are going. As long as they're posted within the platform, um, you get to see how all of this is going. Um, so really, really solid tool. And the best bit for me with Social B is behind the scenes. Their customer success team are really, really supportive. They will onboard you. They'll help you every step of the way and make sure you get the maximum value out of it. Um, so we've talked about how to host audio. We've talked about how to get your clips out there. What about YouTube? Now, YouTube, you'll have all been to the YouTube app. This is behind the scenes on YouTube Studio. Um, and this is my Javelin content page. I'm going to swap to the Market Pulse page. Again, not a huge amount of followers, right? Not a huge amount of views. That's not what it's about for me. Um, some of the videos don't get many views at all. I don't care. Right? I, well, I care a little bit, but I don't care too much. And, and forgive me that this is in black. I'm, I'm ADHD. I much prefer the dark format um, web browser than the, than the light. So that's where we're at. Um, Important thing to notice on, on YouTube, so Studio is the behind the scenes for a channel, right? It's not an app that you have to pay for. It's free, it's included part of your YouTube agreement. You just go to studio.youtube.com. It'll let you access your channel, upload all your content, customize it, set all your settings up, etc., etc. Lots and lots of power behind the scenes. I have a lot of love for this app and a lot of frustrations with it at the same time. So I really do struggle with some of the things that it's just not easy like it should be for some things i'm guessing intentionally um customizing this is essential right so you add a banner image so you need a banner image again like we talked about the other week um you need your graphic design already set up already in place a logo picture you need the name of your channel and you need a description, again, as we kind of already described. And this is the same stuff that you would use in Buzzsprout, right? Buzzsprout, when you're setting that up, you need your description, you need your logo, you need your banner. It all goes in there. Um, and there are so many settings behind the scenes. I'm not even going to go into them all, but um, you can set tags and keywords that you want to be found for. You want to set up whether it's adults or whether it's suitable for children. And I always err on the side of caution and go, no, it's not suitable for children because I, I don't aim at that demographic. I don't care. Um, 
There's all sorts of advanced settings in here. Lots of people go through life never having looked through that. And honestly, there are some time-saving settings that are available in all your customization and your settings in here, worth going through to see what you can set up as standard so that you don't have to add it every time you go in. But the beauty of this is I can upload videos and I can upload in bulk, right? So again, like Social B, I can upload my video for the, for the podcast. I can upload my highlight reel and then I can upload five clips in landscape format at once. I can upload five portrait format or vertical format clips at once and schedule them out, add, add descriptions and things to them and get them going. So that's what YouTube Studio is for. YouTube like, is super important for me and I'll, I'll show you the screen. Um, this, is, this is what the home page would look like, right? So um, let me turn that off. Right, so that's my trailer for the whole show, right? Um, behind the scenes can look kind of cluttered. So if I go in here to content, you can see all the content we've got scheduled out. You can see the dates that things are going out, right? There's a lot of work goes into this, a lot of work. Um, but when you look at it from the customer side of things, um, actually that just looks really nice and simple, tidy, effective. And I can even advertise my own business playlists in here as well. So this Javelin Journeys one here, that's from, um, that's from my, my playlists. Um, I've got a, a custom playlist in here of talks that will change your life. It's my favorite TEDx talks, right? Um, then you've got the reels from Market Pulse. We've got the actual audio from it. And then we've got the, the For You page, which is a mixture of everything. And I, I probably want to update this, right? Like sometimes I like doing these shows because as I'm talking people through it, I think of, oh, I'd like to, I'd like to um, update that. That's, that's, oh, it's been a while since I've visited this. Something else to think about is when you set up your podcast, it's worth setting a reminder in your diary every six months to go back through and look at all of the ways that you distribute it and make sure that you are um, up to date on everything. You don't want to change any of your settings or experiment with any of your settings. This is probably the least technical platform that's in here. Um, very, very simple to use. But there, are, there is a bit of a learning curve for how to use it, hands on heart. Um, there's lots of guides out there on the internet. I don't need to teach you how to use it. There are lots and lots of guides. Um, but just spend the time, I'd say with this more than anything, understanding how to make your own life simple with it. Make sure it's all set up and optimized properly and get the advice from an expert if you're not sure. Um, the most important bit for me in here is this analytics, right? Um, the analytics is key if only for my own self-satisfaction, right? Because again, the analytics don't drive business for me. The analytics just show that what we're doing is resonating with people and they're enjoying it. And you can see along the bottom, like here's the videos that went out on this day and then went through the roof here. And it's it's usually like YouTube shorts. Um, so anything now under three minutes, it used to be anything under a minute, anything under three minutes now is gonna get recognized as a short. It gets pushed harder in the algorithm, gets put in front of more people on mobile and things. Um, so that's key to, you can see here, I've got 539 views on this one with um, Jane Baylor earlier in the, in the week. Um, you can dive into this in as much detail as you want. There is a huge amount of information hidden in here. Again, most people never even realize it's here. Don't look at it all the time. You can get it on mobile device as well. So you can get a version of it that's simplified that you can see at home. Um, dive into this once every month or two months and understand a little bit, take something away from it and do something new as a result. And then the very last thing that I'm gonna walk you through is Descript. Now, I cannot really convey to you how powerful Descript is in probably five minutes that we've got left in this episode, right? It's $30 a month for the pro version. And in my eyes, probably the best $30 I spend each month. It's between that, ChatGPT, and um, Canva, to be honest, like they're my three main tools. Social B as well, like I couldn't couldn't live without it. But this this tool here is the core of my main business, which is Javelin, and I use it for my podcasting. 
And what it does is you'll see in a second, I'm going to click through to, ooh, should I have done that? No, I'm not going to. Yes, I am actually. I'm going to click through to Ryan's episode. So yes, because it's the web version, you'll be able to see it straight away. So we recorded this um, a few days ago, and this is going to get released um, back end of February next year. Um, so you're going to you're going to get to see a preview of it. Now I'm going to make this a bit bigger. So what you can see here, let me just increase the size of my screen here. Right. So what you can see here is. This is the video on the right hand side. So it would have looked something like, wait until it catches up because we're just, because it's running online and I'm streaming the live stream. Right, it would have looked like this um, minus the caption and the logo, right? And what you can do is you can set this design up where it sets up me on the left, Ryan, the guest on the right, my logo captions as a template. And then every time I get one in, I add the video file in, apply the template, and it looks like this. Brilliant. On this left-hand side, you can see it takes the video audio and turns that into text. I can then edit this text like a Word document, and it edits the audio and video to go with it, which is beautiful. Because believe me, you can read the podcast transcript far quicker than you can listen to it back or watch it back and make edits on the fly. What's more, I can move things about and it moves the whole thing with it, right? So you can see here, I've added a sponsorship message in for, for Javelin content in the middle of it. Um, and I literally just drag and drop that in. It's really simple, really easy. Um, we can add chapters in here and I can export every one of these chapters as a clip. Some of them are good, some of them aren't so good. We might not use all of them but it clips the whole thing up into sensible subtopics that we can then look at for use. More to the point, we've got studio sound. So um, let me just check, have I got sound turned on here? Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try something. I can't, I can't see whether the sound's turned on when I share this, but I'm gonna play some sound here with and without studio sound. So you get to see the difference. Oh, apparently that, yeah, it was. Of course it was turned on, right. That's what it sounds like with studio sound turned on. This is it with studio sound turned off. And I'm sure if you can hear me, <laughs> if you can hear that, I'm sure you can hear there's a huge difference between the two. It really does make all the difference in the world. The other thing that you can do with this is you've got this underlord capability in here and everything it says it can do in here, it does really well. I'm not gonna lie, I've played with most of these features. They all work extremely well. You've got um, remove filler words. So where ums and ers are in your script, you can either hide them from these captions on the bottom so it just doesn't come up in your titles, which I prefer to do, or for the audio version, you can delete them all together so that you remove all the um and ums and like and write and I know and repeated words, all those things get automatically detected and removed. You can shorten word gaps. So where your guest might be thinking for a while and um, what before they move into the next topic, then you can, you can shorten those down and you can do things like automatic multicam. So let me go to the square clips, for example. Um, let me show you one here. So this bit here, uh, let's go to there. So there's me talking and it cuts to Ryan. And then it cuts back to me. I didn't, I didn't edit that myself. I've checked it, but I didn't edit it. It automatically detected where it would be good to have a break in me speaking because I'm speaking for quite a while here. So it's cut away to show Ryan's reaction and then back to me again. And it, it'll keep doing that all the way through, right? That is, that is a one click, right? It's not hard to do, it's a one click, it's really useful. Um, you can do things like add draft titles for your show, get your YouTube description, create blog posts, social posts, and, and there's no limit on the usage on this. It's included in your $30 a month. There's no, like, you don't get so many AI credits to use. This is all here, no matter how much you wanna do. You can even generate images and things for your, for your episodes, right? Beautiful, really, really powerful tool. Um, I can't recommend it enough. Um, 
it's absolutely transforming the video podcasting game. And more to the point, what's really beautiful about it is you can publish direct from Descript. Once you're finished with your episode, you can upload it direct to YouTube in minutes rather than having to download or export a video file to your computer, then upload it to YouTube. Descript will just take it and put it straight in YouTube from their servers. Minutes. Um, I think on average, it's about five minutes for a, for a full 30 minute episode to be transformed. Um, and you can do the same with Buzzsprout. So for your audio version, you can publish it straight to Buzzsprout and it's there, seconds. Um, but it's super powerful. I can't, I can't live without it, honestly. I promised you that would be the tools that I'd, I'd dive into today. Um, there are many more tools that I use. Like I say, there's things like Canva and things like that, but they're the ones that you've got there. With those tools, you can launch your podcast and create a really powerful, efficient process. If anybody has any questions, you've got a tool that you'd like to recommend that I haven't covered, um, something that you use for your podcast that maybe I haven't come across, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, drop it in the comments below. I am about, I will be reviewing the comments and answering people. Um, and if you've enjoyed the post, then please head over to the YouTube channel, give at Javelin content uh, a subscribe, and you'll get more content like this on a regular basis, weekly, monthly, yearly. I'm there all the time. Thanks for your time today. I hope you are well. And if you're watching this back later, don't panic. It's all good. Still love to hear from you. All right, take care. Have a good day. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode of Podcasting Unlocked. This is a mini series. We're not going to go on forever, but I do want to give you enough information to be dangerous and get out there so that you can launch your own podcast successfully and stick with it. If all of this seems like it's a little bit too much and you'd like some support from somebody who knows what they're doing, who's done it before, then I'm here at your disposal. I take on three podcast clients per month and one of those lots is currently filled. We are looking for potential clients for the remaining two. And if you just want a bit of advice, then we can certainly sort you out with that as well. Thanks for coming along. Please do spread the word. And if you know anybody that is thinking of starting their own podcast or would be a good fit, please do invite them to the show where they can come along and have their own questions answered as well. See you next week. Bye-bye.